Hello, hello. What am I clicking? <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Cassie, the comp queen. Definitely not the streaming queen. How are you guys doing today? Um, I'm really excited to be here, and I'm like checking myself over there on uh, my computer, which RJ is sitting at, just to make sure I'm like actually live and you can actually hear me. Um, I'm very, very excited to be here today. This is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time, not only to just showcase um, the different products that we use um, as tools in our business to make sure that we're doing our business as effectively and efficiently as possible, um, but also that um, we're able to provide a resource for people, um, something that we often are, are finding and seeing uh, not only just through the space and through our platforms, but also with our students is that, you know, there aren't as many resources out there as one would think to be able to, um, really dive deep into how we comp these properties. Right. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of people that have kind of come to me, um, just within our, our businesses, within our platform, um, you know, JV partners, all kinds of different things that are often asking, Hey, will you verify my numbers for me? Will you look at this comp? Will you look at that comp? Or we'll get the deal and we'll be like, hey, I think we kind of maybe aren't seeing the numbers the same. So we really have always wanted to do this. I'm very excited to be able to, to put this uh, out here and utilize this platform that we've built and this business that we've built to be a great resource for everybody to kind of come and grow and learn and collaborate. Um, and comps are a, a huge, huge part of making sure that if you're in real estate investing, if you're a wholesaler, if you're a fix and flipper, if you are a buy and hold investor, especially if you are doing this and, you know, even if it isn't a, a market that's in another state, but perhaps in a market that is um, in, you know, uh, uh, you know, just another area. Like we were from Texas, you know, we've had properties in a lot of the major markets in Texas, or we may have had a property that's like an hour away from us that, you know, we can't just like pop over there very quickly, or we might not be as familiar as we are, um, with the properties or that are in our backyard. Um, and you know, people kind of like look at comps differently, um, like that, or they're, they're used to comping what they know. And so when they get put into a different market, they're feeling a little bit like, uh, as my father would say, an Easter egg on Halloween. Right. So I'm just very excited. Um, I hope that you guys get a lot out of this. I want to encourage you to ask questions along the way. I want to encourage you if you do have a property that you're a little bit stumped on, or you want to verify your numbers on, um, you know, our students and our in-house team knows um, kind of the information that we gather so we can kind of actually analyze the deal properly, right? Um, depending on the exit strategy, you know, we go very far into that. I'm not going to go through everything under the sun and comping in just one episode here. So I'm going to start out with the biggest basics. This is episode one, but I really encourage you guys to just bring up, you know, any of your questions that you might have. And definitely, um, we're here to comp. So if you've got a property, let's comp it. Um, and you're, if you're comfortable with it going on live, um, I've got the, the comments pulled up and I'm going to, I'm going to hit those up really fast. Um, if you guys don't know me, I'm also the great RJ Bates, the third's business partner. Um, everybody's pretty familiar with the beard, the Viking warrior over there. Um, but, um, uh, I don't go live as much. So if you guys aren't familiar with me, um, or you're wondering why comping queen is on RJ's channel, that's why, um, we're very excited to be able to, um, produce this for you guys. So, um, let's see. Buckled in and ready to learn. Can't wait. The day is finally, I'm so excited that you're here, Chris. 
And I'm so grateful for your unending support and thirst for knowledge. We've been seeing you for a while. Uh, hi, guy. Good to see you, honey. Glad you're here. Zachary Hamilton, thank you. Matt Smith, hello. Hey, if you guys are Facebook users, if you register, I can see who you are. Otherwise, it just says Facebook user. Whoop, whoop. Back at you. Um, we do not use uh, Rehab Estimator Pro. Um, and I'll kind of go into that. Um, it's kind of like a per comp situation. And I'll kind of go into why it's very, very important how you run numbers and how you don't have to be exact on everything because what you're looking for is your offer price, right? Um, if you're obviously $30,000 off on something, that's a huge deal. If you're $3,000 off on something, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, um, so I take certain things with a grain of salt, um, which if you keep watching, I will cover all the things under the sun and I can talk forever. Just ask RJ. Um, I'm very also appreciative of our partner, Elijah, for, uh, being a huge part of facilitating this. He's going to be less the man behind the curtain, AKA the wizard as I like to call him more and more so. Oh, Robert Blaine, my biggest fan is here, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. If you didn't watch, if you aren't here, you don't know about the 50-50-50 challenge that RJ did last year. Um, that's a really great inside joke. Um, one of my star moments. Um, so, uh, Yolanda, my sister, I'm happy to see you here. Very glad. Mario, happy to see you here. Jordan, ah, I've got so many of my favorite people here to support me, and I'm so grateful. Thank you guys so much. Chris in the classroom, I absolutely will comp land for you. That's a question we get asked all of the time. Um, so, if you give me some, some land comps. And it, look, guys, if it's an old lead and you even, you even just were like, I don't even know how to comp this. I'm willing to go. I'm here for you. That's what I'm saying. This is our space together. So I'm here to comp. It doesn't have to be like a current lead. If you're just like, hey, I don't really know how to comp land. And I feel like I probably could have, you know, been a solution for this seller one way or the other. Um, I, but I just didn't really know how to comp it. Um, we can We can definitely go over that as well. So. Um, so Robert Blaine, he's trying to buy me some Starbucks. Hey, hey, from Tampa, John Bates. So good to see you. Can't wait to meet you here shortly. Just a couple weeks away. Hello, Mr. Boyd. So good to see you. Oh, um, if I had to use one software for comps, what would it be? That is a loaded question and I, uh, something I very much intend to cover um, multiple times over. Um, that's going to be very market dependent for me. We utilize uh, Batch. We utilize PropStream. We utilize Propelio. Um, we have all three of those softwares and all three of those tools because we are nationwide. We do deals in all 50 states. Utah is just waiting to happen. Not our favorite, but we're going to get it done one of these days. Um, but my point being, uh, we utilize all three of them for various reasons. They're all fantastic tools. Um, and it's also dependent on, uh, the way that you operate your business, in my opinion. So there's different factors. Um, that would, that would be my recommendation for one specific business. Um, and I'll, and I'll go through why, uh, as I comp, I'm going to be showing you guys, all three of the platforms so that you can really see what the differences might be. So um, I'll, I'll definitely be digging into that. Um, and I think we've got a couple. Okay. Uh, another really quick thing. So obviously if you are a titanium crucible Titan, you know how to access us. So I hope that we get so many people on here that we get a ton a ton of comps, so many that it would take me hours upon hours and hours and hours 
to be able to help you guys. So if you are um, a Titan and I don't happen to get to your comp, make sure you enter it on the hotline. Uh, we will always obviously make sure that you have the resources that you need to help verify. Um, I also made a post in the Facebook group for Titans, um, a template on how to submit those. So there's not so much back and forth questions. And, you know, that's probably something I'll be going over on here at some point, maybe episode two. Hey, Jamie, I'm so good to see you, Jay. Um, so again, if you're a Facebook user, elbow cough, how am I? RJ, are you controlling things over there on my computer? <laughs> He's commenting as me, and I don't even understand how I'm talking to myself. Anyways, um, so let's dig into these comps. And hi, Kip. So good to see you. Um, and then also, really fast as I'm going back and scrolling through the comments to pull up some of these comps, if you are not a Crucible Titan um, and you have a comp that I happen to not get to on the live, then please add me on Facebook um, if you aren't already friends with me and feel free to message. You know, we are here definitely to, I'm here to answer your questions. That's why we're putting it out there. Um, obviously, it's always going to be better if you can see me comp it live so you can see, but I really want to dig into these different platforms of how it looks. I want you guys to be able to see why we do what we do and how we do it. If you can move like I move, then you're going to be better suited to um, do it like I do it, right? So, all right, here we go. I'm going to get into the first one, Mr. Guy Hodges in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've got a, a property here that he's saying, let's comp this bad boy. So the first place that I tend to go is going to be Batch because we market through SMS for Batch. So it's typically speaking very easy for us to just go right into the platform that we are already on and get our comps pulled right there. Okay. Um, you'll be able to see that I also have Propelio as well as PropStream pulled up. So um, these are all resources that we use. They're all tools if you just tuned in that we use. Um, and I'm here to show you how we use them. So one of the things um, I'm kind of waiting for this to load really fast. I don't know if you guys are able to, there we go. Here we go. All right. So one of the things that you'll notice, even though it's not really showing this, but when we do the drop drop down, obviously it's going to show it. Typically speaking, you'll just already see what is already pre-selected. So each one of these tools have pre-selected criteria. One of the things about Propelio that I want you, and I'll touch base on this again, I want you to be cognizant of is that when you go to Propelio, it is going to have no presets basically. Um, and so you want to be mindful regardless of what tool you're in of the presets. Now Batch does their presets pretty broad. The last 12 months, I always pull. Um, typically speaking, I'm not as concerned about this um, in build years. I like to go a little bit broader um, when I see certain things. So this is a 1925 build. Okay. So we're just going to click in here. That's cute. Looks like they tried to sell this on the MLS at some point. So I may or may not spend X amount of time digging into this. I'm literally going to show you guys how I move. I ignore bedrooms all out of the gates. Not always. That doesn't mean ignore bedrooms and bathrooms uh, forever and ever. Amen. Um, and I keep it at the 20% plus or minus on the square footage. Um, I keep it at one mile and I ignore the lot square footage. Okay. Unless I realize that there is a significantly sized lot, right? So this was listed in the MLS and the end of last year for 178,500. Okay. So the first thing that I am going to note is that this property is not going to sell for 178500 Okay. 
So I want to make that super, super clear. Um, that means we've got a situation, right? I'm immediately looking at these comps right here and going, we've got it everything all over the sun. Well, that's because we're within a mile. So let me go ahead and scroll in. And one of the things that makes all of these I want to make this point clear. One of the things that makes a lot of these tools really different at this point in time, because I've seen these softwares grow up. I know their owners and I, and I adore them. Right. Um, one of the things that really differentiates them is the market that you're in as well as the way that you navigate the actual tool in and of itself. So that's why I kind of started out with the basics and talk about the presets. I'm going to talk about those within each platform because I think it's important um, to note that we do a side-by-side -side comparison with what the presets are and why you might see comps differently depending on which tool you use. But realistically, in most markets, until you start to get very rural or you go to a place like Anchorage, Alaska, which we are in, so I, I bring that up for a reason, um, you're really not going to see um, a huge difference in some of the main markets particularly, right? Um, at one point in time, I'll just use an example, and I love props. I love all three of these tools. Let me just be very clear on that. But at one point in time, in PropStream, when they first came out the first year or so, you couldn't pull anything, you know, pretty much past the West Coast. That's because they actually have to pull this data. So they have to get, there's all these, you know, hoops they have to jump through to be able to create this software, right? So um, some might be more difficult to pull in and, you know, the company may not actually have that information or that data pulled or all of the hoops that they have to jump through in that particular market. That is the only reason you see anything different. Um, I also want to be clear on another thing. I do not recommend, nor will I ever recommend that you comp on Zillow without, you don't comp on Zillow. The only thing that I go on Zillow on or a realtor or anything like that, Redfin, is to look at potential past photos. I look on Zillow for rental comps, and that means current rental listings to verify that. And I'll kind of go into that as we comp and comp and comp and comp. Okay, so back to this. And y'all bear with me because, again, I'm not like super Miss Tech. And the more I do this, the more I'll get used to it. So I'm trying to like make sure my mouth is right here and, you know, make sure I look at the camera when I'm on camera. And I don't want to – if I forget to click back on my screen share – uh, y'all got to holler at your girl, like help me out <laughs> because I, I have done that before. Cause I'm, you know, RJ's like pretty much on this every day. And sometimes I get a little dingy cause I just, am over here working. Right. So one of the things I really, really utilize, uh, a lot here is I don't, oh, poopala. I did not mean to do that. Sorry. Cause now it's going to take a minute to get back. Um, one of the things I really utilize a lot and what I just did, I'll show you is the little, um, tool that draws. I do not like, especially when you're seeing many comps in your presets. Um, I do not like to cross major roads and you'll find a lot of times listing agents and wholesalers. Oh man, I don't want to accidentally click the wrong thing again. Uh, listing agents and wholesalers will be like, but this property is, you know, 0.6 miles away and it sold for this. Look, you don't, you want to learn the entire point is to comp like an appraiser. You have to think about if you're wholesaling who your buyer is. So you have to think about what a flipper is going to literally, the, the flipper is going to put X amount of dollars into the property and they're going to then list the property and there is going to be an appraisal. So you don't want to choose a property that's two miles away because you're cherry picking. Okay. These right here, 
if you have six comps that are right here within your set criteria, those are your comps. And when I say that, a lot of people start to get confused. Um, I'm going to go back over here. A lot of people start to get confused. They don't want these you don't need these comps that are across this freeway and across this major road. You know, you don't, these aren't as good of comps as these are. So if you see consistency here, now what I mean, consistency, people are going to be like, well, this one is 125. An appraiser adds and subtracts for things that are better about your property or better about your subject property on the comp, right? So we'll go into that really fast. The reason I like to use this little tool on batch is because I like to, I like to be broad. Um, I like to see what the market can sustain before uh, I go into here, right? So what some people might be prone to do is they see these numbers and they're like, hmm, well, there's this comp right down here that's uh, 258. So that's my ARV. Well, that's not necessarily true, right? You've actually got to comp the property. So what you're going to be looking for is, oh man. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. This does move a little bit slower when you're streaming. Um, so I, I'm sorry for any lag that you guys see. So what I like to do here, and I like to do on many of these tools on um, PropStream as well, is I like to filter by distance. Now, PropStream, you'll see, automatically is filtered by distance. Okay. And so this goes back to that same saying of if you're pulling within a mile and you're filtering it by distance, you know, you then have a good clue as to how far away X amount of property is. Now, I want to go back here and I want to remind you guys that this did not sell on the market for $178,500, okay? Um, I want to look and see what our comps are right here. Um, I'm probably not going to select this one on Main Street as a comp. It's probably on a literal Main Street, it's a five bedroom, one bathroom, which seems a little bit odd to me. Um, and we can actually dig, get into that property and, you know, click around the photos and things like that straight from this. So you see, this is a flip, right? But it looks like some things that they might have mm, cut some corners on. So this is on 12 West Latimer. Let's see what this sold for, okay? Uh, 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 well, I don't even see this. How did that even happen? They might have the wrong property. Interesting. So, hmm. I'm going to actually Google that at that point. I like to look at the street view. That's one of the first things I typically do is looking at the street view on comps. This is a very busy road with commercial. Ugh. Come on, slow poke. I'm thinking this might have been a package deal listing. Or there might be something wrong. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go try to verify a couple things really fast. Because I don't like what I'm seeing there. Something is, something is standing out to me as problematic. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'm going to need my tech team to... I don't even know why it does. It seems like it never does this to RJ when he's what, what you got? comping. Oh, it just is a huge lag. Which one? Batch. Yeah. Um, it might have been sitting dormant for too long. Try refreshing it and seeing if that works. Nah, I, I was also, only on batch. Yeah. Batch does that sometimes when it sits live. When well, it does it on all of them. Oh, you're talking about a lag over here? It, it's a lag on everything. It takes everything forever to pull up. Oh, that's because you're streaming. Too, right? You know what? Well, welcome to the, the fun life of being live. 
We have fiber optic internet being installed. So this isn't a problem anymore. And also, this is me telling RJ, say hi to our, our Viking. Oh, wait. They saw me not wearing my titanium hat. <gasps> well, you're wearing a really good hat. So um, this is us telling RJ right now to get me a supercomputer and get him a supercomputer too. So Elijah, technology officer. We got we to gotta help more people. All right. So we're back here. I'm going to look through, this seems to have more photos or more photos than I went through. Like I said, I think I actually just stopped because I was like, this was listed on the MLS. Seems like they did a great job on this flip. And I, I'm literally clicking through this at the speed of not even as fast. What in... Oh... They're trying to put a TV mount there. Okay, cute. Um, by cute, I mean, eh. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to look at this through the speed of which I actually comp, which is faster. Uh, something that I think is really important for us to do at this point is make sure that we do go to that street view and verify. Uh, dur -dur -dur. So it's by... A uni university in Tulsa. So this is a good area of Tulsa, guy. Just FYI. Um, look at what's across the street. That probably isn't helping matters. And this is why we go to Google Street View, guys. This is 100% why we go to the Google Street View. Because then we'll end up going to Google Street View of the... Um, of our actual comps, right? So another thing that is on batch as well, and I'll switch over, you'll notice that it looks very similar. You can go to the property details tab and you can get all kinds of details about the property, uh, the sale and loan. It's just kind of called different things, right? Um, I know that some of that information... Oh, We'll go back there. So, hey, I'm fixing to yell at people because they're very loud. Um, somebody tell Royce to sh Um, anyways, <laughs> the sale amount was 33000 in 2014. Um, you know, it kind of tells you a little bit of information. Usually that's how quickly I look at it. These MLS details uh, one of the things I do like on here is that it tells us how many days were, it was on the market before it got pulled off of the market. Um, so quite a while. And then we go into the comps here. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think there was a package deal that pulled up in uh, in batch. Okay, so going back to our presets, guys, I think it's very important to note that it presets within X amount of square footage. Usually, I end up going and deleting that out. If we're dealing with a three-bedroom, two-bathroom or less, you're going to probably have comps. And like I said, I kind of like to go a little bit broader. Uh, I like to see what the neighborhood is going to substantiate right if i see this amount of comps i really don't mess with the distance there and just like in a uh, prop in in batch prop stream here has this little tool again i'm a little nervous using it live because of the slow lag time And then I'm just going to hit enter. So it kind of eliminates comps that are across like freeways and things like that. But you're still within the set criteria. Uh, let it pull up for a second. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is also in order of distance. Okay. If you want to change that, you just simply click on the heading. Okay. So I'm going to go actually back and... It's actually very important 
for us. Now, I'm not crossing any major roads, so on and so forth. The reason I like that it's automatically categorized by distance. Where is my distance? It's usually... There we go. I'm used to using a bigger screen if you guys can't tell. Um, so one of the reasons I like going by distance is because you'll note some some places, non-disclosures, they you're not they're not pulling information, but you'll notice our subdivision is you'll see how many are in our subdivision. So like over here, and this is very typical of university areas, you got a lot of choppy subdivisions. This is also very typical of older homes, which this one is built in 1925, right? So um, you're not so worried about making sure you pull comps in your subdivision. And that's exactly what an appraiser is going to do. They're going to go like by distance and the set criteria. Um, keep in mind, guys, you know, and something I want to be cognizant, you know, I'm sure if you're a Crucible Titan or, you know, somebody who has paid attention to any of the times that I've been on here and talked about comps, you, I, I want to reiterate, like you're looking for what is like and kind, what is most comparable, thus the word comps, to what you're trying to do with the property, okay? So if you're looking for an ARV, that is an after repair value, that after repair value comes from the repairs. So you've got to determine what repairs this needs. This property has been flipped. I'm assuming it needs very little in repairs. I'm also assuming that there is something wrong because it did not sell on the market for a very long time for this market at the price point that it was listed at very recently in a very good, very good market cycle. Um, there's absolutely no reason that I can see, except for, like I said, on the Google Street View, this is not the best neighborhood. They might have chosen to you know, do this neighborhood because it's close to the university. Um, and you know, this, this part of the neighborhood, they, they might be first in on, on flipping, you know, um, I don't think that's going to necessarily be the case, but what indicates to me being that street view is they've got this big old building right there. So that's a multi-family unit of some sort. Um, they've got, some some really distressed properties right across the street from them so that's what i've got to be looking at for my comps and see we got to figure out what's the missing piece why didn't this not sell and what would be the offer on this for somebody who's going to purchase it so if you're purchasing it you're probably not a flipper but you might be because you might be fixing something like that's wrong with the property that the seller actually just didn't have any more money to put into it um you might be looking to rent it. So um, just knowing Tulsa like I do, very unlikely, and and I'm correct there. Oh, let me go back to my other screen. Sorry. There I go. Um, this rent right here, and I, like I said, I often look at this on PropStream, and I will verify it with current rental listings on Zillow. This is close to a university, so that might be something you want to look into. However, this is this is um, this is structurally um, a, a very much a single family home. It's two bedrooms, one and a half baths. I don't know that you're going to even get much more in rent if you rent it out to students at this point, right? So, uh, having gone through all of that. We're going to go back to distance. I don't have photos easily accessible right here. This is another one of those that was on main. This is that five bedroom one, which is really interesting to me. Uh, you know, this sold for, and it looks like it has an additional unit. This sold for 115, 500. So... This square footage is potentially wrong. Oh, this is taking too long to pull up. Uh, so we'll keep going. Uh, we're going to have to start looking at some of these comps and figure out why. Okay. So this sold for 155 It looks remodeled in my opinion there's nothing in here on an appraisal so far now the market might not like that curb appeal as much 
But this sold for 155. Three bedroom, one bathroom, so we're missing half bath. And we have but we have an extra bedroom. It's 1412 square feet, lot size, year build. Everything's pretty much checking out. I don't see a huge difference. So a lot of times what I do here is I deselect everything. I say that's a decent comp because as I said, on an appraisal, you're going to get additions and subtractions. So, you know, they might add for that bedroom or they might subtract from ours from that bedroom, but they might add because of um, the half bath, right? Or I say might, they do. Um, but this gets credit because of having a larger square foot. This gets credit. So that means that's subtracted. So for everything that this has, that's basically better than ours, they're going to subtract a certain amount. So right now, if that's the closest comp, our ARV, our appraisal, unless there's something that makes us cooler and better, is is coming in much lower than what they had it listed for. So that being said, I'm going to keep going up here. I really need to see what's going on with some of these. But bam. So this is the only time I'll really use Zillow, guys. I'm going to look and see, like, why are you better? You're a 2 one 11 This makes me feel amazing. It might be the when it sold. I mean, the market, as y'all know, has been bananas and pajamas. Um, so this is this is going to take a minute to pull everything up. The world of stream, the lovely world of streaming. The first thing I know, like, it sounds really weird. I'm looking to see if they do actually have an extra bathroom. A lot of times I see that. Where I'm just like, why did it not pull up that it had a half bath? Okay, so 2 one I'm telling you right now, this makes me feel fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. 12-12, or was it 12-17? 12-17. This is a comp, right? So a lot of times it's just because, hey, maybe this really wasn't remodeled very well, especially on the outside, the way I see it. Uh, there's something that we're not seeing. You guys got to remember, we're looking at photos from listings. Like they're not trying to highlight, they're not trying to highlight the not positive things about this property, right? They're trying to get buyers in the door. So, you know, sometimes you just have to use logic and you want to make sure you have, you know, three to six comps that make you the, that are consistent, that give you consistent data, consistent numbers that are comparable, that you can sit there and say, okay, if I put this much into the property, this is what it should sell for. Okay, so back to this. Um, all right, my darlings. 165. We're going to look this girl up and we're going to assume. I don't know why all houses are girls to me. So oh, if you're offended, please just find something better to be offended about. <laughs> Car houses and cars i don't know why like because i talk to them i personify inanimate objects <laughs> so this sold in january or excuse me uh, um this sold in uh december that's that's the word i'm looking for december of 20 um right two days before christmas which just makes me so happy somebody had a great christmas present that, that year one of the things I love so much about real estate, side note nation, is I just really have a, my passion for real estate began with, you know, this is somebody's home. And I love uh, the environment of home. Um, I love the atmosphere of home. And I love the concept of, you know, facilitating a home that someone will love and have, make memories in. And that's what I love about real estate. All right, so all of this indicates to me this is kind of like not my favorite flip, but it kind of tells me what we can and can't get away with, right? So our listing, what I'm seeing so far as far as prop stream goes, was just listed too high. I mean, not 
gonna lie. So I'm gonna wait for those photos to pull up. But one of the things sometimes I don't mind about Zillow is usually you can hit the street view up from right there. And it just uses Google Maps. And this is like another thing that we can kind of do. Now, I don't know if you guys remember back, but what did I mention? These are just things that I know because I've comped a million properties. I don't expect you guys to have these instincts, but I, I want you to learn how to move like I move. Um, the reason I know this is I looked at that street view. I saw the properties around it. I don't think uh, all the re he's the first on this street, you know? So let's look at the distance between, say, this comp right here on Cheyenne versus our subject property. You know, they might have just been overshooting it. And that's what I would imagine. Uh, what's interesting to me is they should have gotten offers still. So did their realtor fail them? I don't know. Uh, let's look at the street view of this one that didn't have photos right there. Um, I mean, it's so crazy to me. They, they weren't listed that high. You know what I'm saying? But all these properties around both of these comps that sold anywhere close to what he had it listed at or she had it listed. At. I think it was a guy, but I don't want, I screw up names all the time. Um, even this one has a nicer street uh, view neighborhood, even though it's not significant, it looks a lot better than our neighborhood. Um, another thing that might be doing us some disservice. That's just so cheap to handle. Like, come on, come on, guy. You know, like we've already got this situation with the bars on the windows. Um, I mean, man, we're going to go back to the street view for you, for you guys really fast. So, and I also want to note to you guys, okay, so maybe they did. Mm, this image was captured, I think, a long time ago. So they should have probably painted this. Um, I think when they had this listed, it must have been winter because you could very easily see this boarded up. I think this is like a shack or shed from the neighbor. Um, you know, it's just, it's not giving you as many good feels. And, you know... I mean, there was just simple things that could be kind of done here, but this Brady Heights historic district might have had something to do with it as well. You know, the cost of rehabbing it and flipping it. So let's go to this mortgage and transaction history. Uh, they might not have flipped it. So you kind of see that loan estimated loan balance, so on and so forth. So being that, I, you know, I don't know certain things, you know, typically speaking, I ask people to tell me, okay, well, what does the seller, um, what does the seller say the general condition is? Um, if you guys watch RJ, you kind of know how we ask these things. Um, what, you know, is it, is it occupied? Um, is it owner or tenant occupied? If it's tenant occupied, do you have, you know, a month to month or is it on a long-term lease? What is the rent rate? Um, those kind of tell us a lot about the value and condition and living situation of the property, um, and what's been done with it. Um, what is a potential rent, you know, because that, that plays into offer prices oftentimes. Um, what is, you know, that ARV? I think that this is going to be lower than what they had it listed for if everything checks out. Uh, I do very much think that this is more like a 165 ARV to 170 ARV. Um, and they had it listed for almost 180, I believe. Um, so they might not have gotten very good traction or, you know, there might be something wrong with this property, but, you know, I'm also asking, you know, what is the rehab in our opinion on this property? Okay. 
Uh, I'm always going to put a little bit of a budget in there for a rehab. If it's not selling, I'm always going to be looking for something that really stands out as funky to me about the property. You know, a lot of times that might look like, like, uh, why is the washer and dryer in here? I mean, look, they put like a really cool little wine fridge in here and everything. I'd be digging that kitchen. Um, this is kind of goofy, but they might've thought they were playing, you know, HGTV star. Um, I'm not in love with this, but I don't hate it. It doesn't really affect an appraisal value. This makes you wonder what's under here. Why didn't we just paint this? before we took listing photos does the historic district have anything to do with it is this ours we don't i think it might be long to the property that might have something to do with it again probably not going to highlight that um i'm just trying to like look for anything of note is that purposeful what could we be missing here? But I don't even think they listed it anywhere close to market value. But with it being on the market that long, you know, maybe they were just chose to wait it out. But I think the ARV in this is definitely. Now, this is interesting. Is the attic space part of the square footage? That could be a big kicker. How much square footage is this attic space? That is something to sincerely note, you guys. I'm going to call that about 10 by 30. It's got to be 250 square feet at least. Is that a part of the square footage? And is that why they won't sell? That would be what I would ask your seller. That changes the comp because they look to have done a pretty good job. Is this how you get to that finished out space? Okay. So that's what I'm going to say. If it is only a thousand square feet without that finished out attic space, look, we, we change in our comps. Our comps go drastically down. Okay. So then we're looking at, how do I explain this? So attic and basement space are calculated differently in different places. Okay. Um, but you, as a flipper, my rule of thumb has always been not to count finished attic space. Um, in your price per square foot, certainly. If you're going to do a price per square foot, you kind of need to know, and I at least cut it in half. So say your price per square foot makes sense um, on this particular property. It's looking at like 124. I'm going to subtract the attic square footage. And this is a rule of thumb. This is not an appraisal thing. But as a flipper, I would always do this. Um, I would subtract the square footage, say, I, I just said it's about 250 square feet. Okay. And they included that in the square footage in the listing. And that is exactly why they have it listed way too high. And they weren't getting the offers they wanted to see. Right. Cause I'm five foot nine, almost. I am not going to spend a lot of time walking around in that space. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put like a reading nook and maybe, you know, a little art studio up there. It's not as livable square footage. It's livable square footage, but it's not as livable as the rest of the thousand square feet of the house, right? So what I would always do is I would say, I'm going to comp this as a thousand square foot property or whatever it was. Yeah, about thousand square feet. I'm going to comp it as a thousand square foot property. And then I'm going to add for that 250 times $60 per square foot. That is the actual value that it adds to the, house, to the property. That is not a perfect storm right there. That's just what I would do. That's mostly here in DFW because it's mostly where I would see that at the time. Another way to look at it is just comp it and then 
add $10,000 for a bonus room or whatever that kind of looks like. That's what you're kind of looking to do. Whoever had this house was really trying to capitalize on that square footage um, is what this looks like to me. But you'd have to ask those questions to the seller. If that is bonus space and it's not included in the 1260, I'm calling this 165 all day, every day. So it doesn't really look like any rehab is needed. Maybe a little bit on the outside. I would, you know, give a small budget for that. Uh, it doesn't really work out as a rental. I'm not going to count that as a rental right this second. Uh, again, because I don't, I'll probably do that in a whole episode of that by itself. So uh, moving on, we've got another property here for Mr. Matthew Smith. Again, if you guys, if I don't see, because I have so many beautiful comments, if I don't see your comp on here, please, 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 you know, message me through the appropriate channel, uh, add me on Facebook or you know, if you're a Titan, you, you're already like my peeps, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, so let's get back to this, uh, right here for Matt 304 West third street. I hope that helped everyone. I guess I should go back through these comments and see if any of that helped. Uh, why is RJ showing his face? This is his show. <laughs> Oh, my biggest fans. So I'm jealous that there was a Viking in the camera. <laughs> uh, my favorites. My favorites. Royce. <laughs> we have Royce the Viking. We have to have him come do uh, some some of his loud Viking chants for us one day. My ADD. Oh, Patrick. I love you. Oh, I have so many wonderful people in here. I'm so happy. Oh, I know. Refresh. Jennifer, so good to see you. Oh, I'm so happy to see all of you on here. It makes me so happy. Oh, Michael, you're so welcome. I hope it can be used as a great resource. Uh, 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 uh. Hi, Roger. Anna, hi. Give the crowd what they want. I always try to. Within reason. <laughs> I comps is powered by Zillow. I get similar numbers as the MLS software. Why do you avoid Zillow? Uh, where are you? Where are you at? Where are you comping? Uh, Zillow's just, I mean, it's just an algorithm. It's not pulling from actual MLS data. Uh, it's, it's very imperfect in a lot of places. So I avoid Zillow because it's definitely not accurate everywhere. It's not to say you can't get similar, uh, but I definitely, I've, I've seen way too many people uh, really fail trying to save $99 a month. That is my answer. So if you're in one market, well, maybe that works for you perfectly. Obviously, you've uh, tested it against Mustache Mike. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just going through the comments again. Hello, Adam. Thank you for supporting me. Only a portion of the attic, right. Depends on, I love this. Thank you, Jana. Um, only a portion of the attic would be included by the appraiser, like standable. Yep standing room. So that's why like that was always like my, my rule of thumb right there. So like maybe in that particular example, it would be a hundred square feet. And you know, that $60 a square foot was a little too generous, you know, cause it had like a lot of, uh, but standing room is just kind of, yeah, seven foot, or more, six foot or more, depends. Functional abstinence, absolent, obsolence. Jeez, I said abstinence. You came up with 167. Good job, buddy. All right, so which one are we on? I think I had one up here, and then Roger entered one, Jay entered one. 304 West. Here we go. 
I've already been on for an hour. See what I'm saying? It takes me two minutes to normally comp something. <laughs> 304. So I want to make sure I'm going to pull this up and uh, McCook, Nebraska, huh? Hmm. McCook, Nebraska. So I'm going to make sure to try pull on Propelio as well. Look, I'm only trying to be on here for like an hour and a half. So if your comp is pretty far down uh, on the list in the comments, just be prepared to go ahead and send it to me. We'll comp it. I'm going live every Wednesday so that we can cover more. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to pull this up. Uh, McCook, Nebraska. I hope y'all can get familiar with all my crazy accents that I do. <laughs> While this pulls up. Let's try this, I guess. And hit them up. All right, so I'll do a little showcasing on what I see in Propelio. Since I did a little on batch, and y'all could kind of see those differences. We'll do a Matthew Smith. Is this your property? <laughs> Are you just trying to stump me? <laughs> you trying to sell? You need a buyer? <laughs> what do we got here? Interesting. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And you can deal with this and you can deal with that. All right. So I want to reiterate because people use this a lot and they make this mistake a lot. Okay. The presets on Propelio only preset distance and month of data. Okay. Now I like this. But I don't want you to make the mistake of comping a 2,400 square foot property on three acres with a 2, 1, 1,200 square foot property on 0.25 acres. Because you didn't remember what I am showing you. And I see people do that a lot. I see people do that on Zillow a lot. Another reason why I don't like to use Zillow. Even though they do have the ability to set your square footage and things like that. But um, I don't see any comps in here. on Propelio. So we are going to try to go to another one of these. And now y'all are understanding 100% why We have multiple tools that we utilize. Oh, Malanta. So many third streets. This is one of the things. And I'm not, I, I want y'all to understand this. I'm never hating on any one of these platforms. <laughs> That's one of the things that kills me about um, PropStream is it's very picky on the way it pulls up an address. Like, hello, I know this address, no results. You are trying to stump me. Is this a real address? We already determined it was.
It seems like a pretty traditional neighborhood. So I don't understand why this is not pulling up comps whatsoever. I really want you to see my face as I do this one because this would definitely be the first time I have run into this where I <sighs> can't pull up comps on anywhere. It's like a... the Bermuda Triangle of houses. Wait a minute. Matt, am I missing a comment down here? Can <laughs> TJ, to answer your question, you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. I don't know how well that would be received by certain groups, but <laughs> uh, you know, we we have we've had a thing for a while. Uh, Warrior kings and warrior queens. It's kind of a company thing we do so I could get into that but yeah you can call yourself whatever you want uh Matt 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 where is your comments amazing to see how others think are you sure this is uh It's one of the rentals you're ditching. Is it this house? And Google's just pulling it up wrong. It, like I'm, it's crazy because I can pull the property up in Propelio. So is this data and is this accurate? Because this is tripping on trying to pull it up in any other platform, and it's not pulling comps in any of them. I mean, let me go hog wild. I feel like my computer is broken or something. And it will, it really will not pull data up in batch or prop stream. And usually this is the exact opposite. I cannot pull the, pro I, if I can't pull property up, it's usually in here but this is pulling it up with no comps they're pulling up it's showing the property is not it's failing here which is weird and then i can't get the address at all 304 west third street in mccook failed no results like, it's not pulling the address up, which is bananas. I'm on the correct house, the metal brown roof. The one that says 303. But on Google Maps. Uh, just for kicks and giggles. <laughs> Don't do it on that one either. Ugh. So this kind of makes me... If you're holding this property, 
This makes me understand why you... Might, might reference Zillow, uh, I guess. Is it the Board of Realtors won't allow the data to be released? I don't know. It's interesting. It says 304. Literally on the house. So. <laughs> You're saying you find this to be pretty accurate. I pull literally no comp. So finance it. Move on. Hey, we're not analyzing the deal. We are pulling comps. I am trying to help Matt. There are no comps. There is a crap ton of comps on Zillow, and there's none on any of the other platforms. That's what happens when you buy the middle of the cornfield. That's what happens when you buy the middle of the cornfield, RJ says. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, one of the things that I definitely would do is give me some other Nebraska comps if that's your main market. Uh, and they're not in McCook. But yeah. I know. It's been so long since I even tried to. Yeah, I would just make sure you use the. Some of these filters and do kind of the same things but this is insane to me these are supposedly comps but it's not being pulled so it's got to be something to do with the mls board in mccook nebraska so yeah rj says seller finance it uh I don't understand why Zillow's algorithm says the house is worth 16000 if I'm seeing these. That's another reason why I'm just like, is that reliable information? You don't know, say. All right. Let's go on to a property we can comp. <laughs> I am scrolling through. If it's a RAM thing, I think y'all, I think the reason that we get a little bit of delay is just because of our internet. Um, like I said, we should have a fiber line and actually we should already have a fiber line in here prior to us starting to do some more of these lives from our office. But unfortunately... Um, we were just not able to, uh, they, they kind of installed something a little goofy, so I don't think it'll be until next month. All right. So we're going to do 110 Oak Knoll Drive. Let's get back to comping. Let's give Propelio a shot here since we didn't get to get to do it. 110 Oak Knoll Drive. And that's in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Hmm. Matt's criteria has a population of less than. I don't know if Robert Blaine is being funny or if he actually knows that. Oh, but that's so funny to me. Population of less than a thousand people. Oh, there you, there you go. Why is Robert Blaine giving me? Robert Blaine is a fake person. All right, let's go. Let's go with Oak Knoll. Uh, I have to scroll up and figure out who's this was so I can. Roger. All right, Roger. Let's go. 
Let me get full screened back up here. All right. So again, we're going to go back to these presets and we are going to want to make sure um, that our property is comparable in a 3, 2, 15, 12 square feet, 1989 build. Don't love when I see a thicker road. I always want to make sure that that's not a major road. Uh, what I usually like to see is seeing, uh, um, you know, something on my side of the street. Uh, if I don't, I just assume that this is a bigger lot. So I make sure and I check those types of things. Um, you know, I want to go in here and see this is 20, 20, 21, 21 square feet. A 2012 build. So now y'all understand what I mean. 20, 20, 2162 square feet. Now you understand what I mean. Like you're seeing consistent data here. Uh, your presets are being very important. So sometimes when I see a lot of the first ones that I click on are much larger, I just go ahead and do a maximum square footage of about, you know, 250 over. Uh, I don't really know how big of a town Goldsboro, North Carolina is. So I'm just kind of going in general. Um, I've got half a half a mile within 12 months. Um, I'm not super concerned about the build years, but I don't really want new builds. So this being 1989, I'm gonna probably just go with 2009 on a, a max and see if that makes a big difference. Um, and I'm just gonna leave the rest rest alone. See what it populates. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh, that took away a lot of options. And that's why I'm super cautious about the recommended defaults. Um, so let's take just that build year out. Let's see. A lot is like half an acre, not even. So kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Well, let's see what this this gal here looks like. Okay, three, one and a half, oh, about, I mean, it's much older. So at this point, you know, I want to make sure Somebody's playing around up in here. I think his name is Titus. Do we have a Google Street View? I get sad when there's not. Might be just taking a little bit. Keaton, what are you doing? Tell this fool to simmer down. <laughs> the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep it cash. Y'all have to deal with my shenanigans in the background. I don't even know if you can hear them. Okay, so what I want to do is ask for y'all to bear with me. I need to close a bunch of stuff down. 110 Oak No. Hello. Mm. <laughs> uh -huh. Google Maps does this wrong.
Christopher, how can you get information on the next crucible? Well, you've come to the right place. Patrick's already on it. You guys, can I stress the beauty of having a team of badasses behind you every day? Mm, I love my team. Even when they're acting like fools in the next room, it distracted me. Hi, Karan. Patrick is definitely on it. I love it. All right, so back to Oak Knoll. And I swear, you guys, I already know this is going to be so much faster when I have, uh, when we get that fiber line. All right, so our presets. Now, mind you, let's pop back here. I'd only really pulled up not a lot right here. So these presets make a big difference, remember? So this is giving you like 300 over and under. I think we're gonna have to go out further, which is kind of the opposite of what we are doing in another market, right? So we've got two miles now. So this was kind of the opposite of the Tulsa property where you didn't want to cross major roads, period. Now we need to kind of go a little bit broader because we need to really understand what can our market here handle in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Um, so you really, really want to sort by distance here okay and again prop stream automatically does that i deselect everything now at this point you might want to sit here and say okay i really feel like we should go you know 1.5 miles just to cut out some of it you know like they're not going to be used we have 20 some odd 30 some odd on here now, why in God's name, I'm thinking it doesn't pull up in half a mile as I'm thinking there's not a lot of like residential things going on in, in these spaces, as you can kind of see from the map views, like there's clearly some rolling hills or some streams or some natural things happening here where they just didn't build in those neighborhoods because it's not like these are huge rural lots either necessarily um so again sorting by distance you don't necessarily have to worry if you've gone too far out uh obviously we had some in these neighborhoods but they were you know some of them were much newer builds some of them were just they were all over like 2,000 square feet so we have really no choice uh, except for to pick the next, cl the closest thing that's comparable, right? So what I love about this, and I love this list view, is I'm looking in here, I'm looking at my top 10 properties, okay? Before I even start looking at Zala's, I'm looking at my top 10. Because they're all within reasonable build years where I'm not tripping. Um, three twos. Now, yeah, we got a four one in there, but we got a two one here. You know, the lots in and of themselves, I am automatically just not going to include comp number 10, okay? I'm just going to include, I'm not even looking at prices. I'm just doing this how I do it, quick and dirty, like normal, like, or I'm trying to because... I'm never able to go as fast when I'm like explaining or teaching. Um, these all say rural residences, agricultural. So I'm not really like this says mobile home. Okay. Oh, this is really killing me that I couldn't get a street view earlier. So I've got to go determine in this market what rural agricultural residence means. Because uh, <laughs> it won't let me do a street view. Mm. 
So let's try to look at the at these really fast to make sure. Hey, is this a mobile home as well? Can we use this as a comp? We can't tell because why take a picture of the actual front of the house for your listing? <sighs> I don't even want to tell you what I thought that said. If you can read that. Uh, Robert Blaine, are you paying me money, you crazy fool? <gasps> Oh, this is a sub two and you have photos. <laughs> oh, I wish I was as funny. I can't even explain to you guys how much time I spend laughing in my day. I have the funniest people around me, and every now and then I get a good zinger in, but they just keep me cracking up. RJ tells me I'm not funny, but I can be very funny. It's just hard to be funnier than him. Uh, so, yeah, you having photos, um, not, I mean, yeah, if I'm, I'm not going to have you, like, sending photos here uh, on the live stream, but I'm trying to figure out... <laughs> If any of the rest of these happen to be mobile homes, um, honestly, a lot of times what I, I, I don't mess too much with mobile home stuff. I mean, look at this. I can't, I can't get street views on anything and granted, you know, I'm talking from a standpoint of, Hey, look, uh, we're, we're nationwide, you know, a lot of people aren't nationwide and they might, they might, uh, you know, they might make, be able to, to justify a, you know, fixing up a mobile home. I, I see people do it and successfully and make money. Um, but a lot of times I'm going to be real with you. Like as I pull up this comp to try to figure out if it is also what rural resident agricultural means one of the things i do love about prop stream is i could absolutely just go in here and pull up mobile homes but i don't see i don't know what it's gonna take to get there there's no rows to show so sometimes that means we have to go out in four miles you see what i'm saying so it's just it's kind of difficult for me. I mean, you see drastically different prices there. You definitely want to be cognizant. Are these, are these properties that are in a mobile home park makes a, a really big difference. So I'm trying to, you know, see if I can't pull up a lot of times in the listing, beautiful brick veneer. Sorry, I'm just reading through it. Spacious two car garage. Yeah, so I'm thinking this is a single family, like traditional single family home. And the, most of those must have been. So then we have to just kind of go back and stick to our findings that are that are mobile homes. So another really important thing to pay attention to on mobile homes is that build year um, and make sure it can even be financed. Uh, older mobile homes are not very attractive to me unless they're super cheap. Um, a lot of times people will purchase a mobile home and they don't hold their value as well. So, you know, they purchased this in 1999 for 56,000. Um, sometimes this is better to turn into a rental. 
So you're saying that this is a sub two. Um, I, I would assume the exit strategy on it would be based on that rent rate. So I would go uh, and comp and verify this rent rate. Um, I would not be basing this necessarily um, on these other mobile homes. Um, only because it can really vary the land that it's on, things like that. But let's just look up, you know, let's just say our average was 7,500 on these, but it might be, no, this ain't a sub two. Oh, sorry. I must have misread that. Pace gave you a list of mobile homes. Huh. I'll just be looking at the condition then. Does it have the porch? Does it have covered parking? Does it have a driveway? What does the lot look like? That's important. This year built it makes this much more valuable than what you have as a subject property year built is really important on on mobile homes um they they significantly uh decrease in value the more years that go by uh they just don't hold their value as well even if you remodel them i think uh the rules are oh, i believe they changed but the rule of thumb for me was always like 20 years. Uh, you won't be able to get like a, a regular loan on it. And that really dropped the value. But I think that changed um, last year, potentially. And uh, I am not really up to date on it. I don't, I, I don't really... I look at these comps as much more valuable versus the comps that are like 20. So like, for example, I'm just going to let you know. This one, this one, this one. Let's see what these say. 23,000. This one says 96. So you would want to figure out why. Is it the lot in and of itself? 8,000. So there's one that's higher up there. Um, that was purchased for the lot square footage. So I wouldn't consider these others as comps, so to say. So I would kind of comp the land probably. Um, our land isn't that much. This is looking more like I'm going to look into what the photos of this look like or the street view if you can find it. Uh, I'm going to look at what what uh, very, year, year built on mobile homes is dire. Uh, the land versus it being in a mobile home park, absolutely crucial. And, and those are super important. And then I would almost always be looking at the condition and, and trying to consider making it a rental instead of a flip if it's like 25 years or older, because I think you're just going to be able to um, get more value out of it as an investor versus buying a 30-year-old mobile home um, and putting a bunch of remodeling in it. You know, that's not always the case, but without more information, that's just kind of the way that I always look at it. We're not really big into mobile homes for this reason, unfortunately. So uh, I have to be really sold on the land. Really sold on the land on a mobile home. Or if it's a newer mobile home. Or I love that uh, that rent rate. 
That's what I like to look at. <laughs> Jordan, I'm going to let you go ahead and send that one into the hotline. You might have to pull up this different address. This is a number. I'm guessing the, uh, in Pittsburgh, that's like a townhouse, condo, unit, apartment. And we be moving a little bit slower today because I'm trying to teach in the interwebs. Doesn't like me streaming all the things. Trying to get, uh, if you want to, buddy, I'll, I'll go, uh, I'll do that on Google Meet once I give RJ his computer back. Sorry, I'm reading through the comments, you guys, so I can find the, oh, geez. There was another one on here. It's a home? Why does it have a number? Is it a mobile home? Y'all mobile home heavy? Okay. Apparently we're North Carolina heavy because I see an address. 502. West 4th. Ave. In Red Springs. I love doing this because I often get the most challenging comps on the planet. I'm about to start giving myself some comps on here. To pull. So that y'all can see like the more normal. Let's try to give this a whirl. We'll see what we got on all three on this one with just presets and then adjust. It was kind of confusing, <laughs> for sure. You wanted to push my comping limits. <laughs> I'll probably feel better about that, Roger, like next week when the fiber optics installed and I'm not having to... <laughs> I always feel like, how does so much time pass? Every time I go live comping, it's so crazy to me because I'm like, I've been on here for an hour and a half and I've comped like three properties and I don't I have like a ton of information. Gee. Our Robert Blaine, he's trying to, he's trying to stump me and he's supposed to be my biggest fan. <laughs> we got nothing. And it was 544 square feet. Robert Blaine, are you insane? I'm going to throw something at Robert Blaine. 544 square feet. I'll comp this for you. It's worth 12 doll hair. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, so funny. Hopefully nobody is injured. Nobody was injured in that. 544 square feet. Chase Lee got an offer accepted on it. For how much? 20. 20. All right, y'all. This is a true test. What kind of a box is that? A 504. Apparently, one we're fixing a contract. <laughs> I hope you're still watching. Oh, I can't show my face. It was really funny. <sighs> Remind me to always have something to throw at RJ. Um, This is kind of cray. So let's just first back out of some of this, you guys. You know, I, I love that you guys are... are you know, sending me the ones that you're challenged by, you know, I, I definitely don't mind that. And it gives me the opportunity to kind of go now, guy, your, your property wasn't that challenging. And I spent a lot, good amount of time showing, you know, what I thought about it. Um, I'm just going to go up to a thousand square feet on this. So you guys can kind of see how I operate. 
Joshua. Joshua's got one. Oh, Matt, you got another one. <laughs> he said that should pull up. Uh. Oh, 20,000, huh? What is crazy to me? Like, what part of North Carolina is this hot mess in again? In 1940 build. Or, I mean, I just am like, why? This is so interesting. So the presets on here, remember, even though you can't see them, 20% on that square footage. So that's why those presets are not doing us any good favors. So the presets here, um, 540, like they're don't, they don't do uh, presets on square footage on, on Propelio. So like you're looking at this, like it could be all over the place now. You can either click on it or you can change this. So this is two bedroom, one bathroom, 1306 sold for 60,000. Um, that's upsetting. So I would just like, let's just go hit this preset up and see what it does. Yeah. Not crazy about it. Right. Um, okay. These look like they might be townhouses. So I'm just really not loving my comps on any of the other two platforms. So I'm going to kind of go with this and stick with this. Uh, first couple of things I'm going to do are try to get this straight view. Oh, there's a piggly wiggly. I love it. <laughs> um, I don't have photos. So I am not in love so far with this. One of the things I have to consider is this is not a property. Um, you have a narrow buyer's pool for 540 square foot property. Um, so let's see what we get from it. Kind of what a system. Mm. I've got to be honest with you. It's a little better than I expected. And what I'm looking for here is to see if there's maybe any uh, since this was not submitted, um, we're just submitting for comps. Uh, Y'all are looking at, I'm just teaching you how to comp. Uh, I don't know if, you know, what kind of condition this is supposedly in. Um, I don't know what additions there might be. I'm just going off of what I can pull up here. Okay. So... Uh, I'm just kind of looking at this street view to see, you know, if I can get a general idea of both of those things. This was obviously done in 2012. So I can't like, re it's not necessarily reliable information. You know, it, they might have installed HVAC by then. I'm assuming they didn't change the style of home. Um, they could have added on. There seems to be some kind of outbuilding back here. Is it a second? Um, these are the things I'm going to look at you guys. Cause I might be completely comping this wrong. Um, yeah, I might be completely comping this wrong and you know, it has additional square footage attached to it or a guest house or something like that. RJ, how come I can't, uh, we might have to go away now. Because uh, I just don't have any. I hate those damn noise canceling headphones. I'm listening to you. Oh, but you're on a delay. I don't know if you're listening to me. The camera's black. 
So I'm going to keep going uh, on here. You guys might not be able to see me. Sorry. Technical difficulties. We have new equipment and so on and so forth. I hope. Zane, I know you're, you're right here. Cassie is busy comping Home Depot shack. She'll get you your single family residence in due time. Uh, yeah, right now, as far as this one in North Carolina, uh, it's going to be between ten and $45,000. Uh, i have got to look and see what, what these are. But I'm assuming it's going to be closer to the $44,000. Uh, but look at this whole hot mess. <laughs> you guys, this is not a property I want as an investor. This is not. This is. I'll take this. You know. This is, this is not, this is a whole, you know what this reminds me of? Something in a Rob Zombie movie. I'm just saying, uh, we don't want that. We, we probably are not going to be able to sell that. So this might be able to justify it a little bit better. There we go. Now you can see yourself. Oh, yay. See what I was talking about, about teams. So. Love mine. <laughs> um, so yeah, the battery died on my camera. Uh, anyways, so back going back to this property, the one on one fourteen Malloy. I don't know if it's that one or if it's this one, but I feel pretty good that either way. I wish I could see house numbers. Because I think they both say 121. I'm pretty confident that that, that is a, a decent comp for that. We just have to be very cognizant of uh, the area. I would typically go ahead, not necessarily on that one. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Ugh. Sweet potatoes. We don't, we are in the middle of a cornfield. Elijah said, I wasn't planning on you going live for like eight hours, Cassie. Exactly what I, was just <laughs> I already can see it in your ear. Look, until we get this. Show. That's right. That's so, I got my show. I'm going to I'm going to capitalize on episode 1. Uh we are, we are really looking forward to that fiber optic line being installed. <laughs> Comping is like a, the, one of the hardest things to do in my opinion. Uh live because there's so much lag time um when you're streaming. It's it's frustrating. I mean, not to not to take away from what RJ is doing. Like there's definitely lag time in there and he definitely goes and comps and things like that too. So Fayetteville, North Carolina I mean, I look, I don't hate this. <sighs> this seems like it could be a pretty rural place. So I'm going to see what the population is. I'm not crazy about this. I could see it being okay as a rental. Potentially, I would go to verify those rental numbers. Such a small square footage as a 3-1 concerns me. That's you know, I, so I'd be asking, you know, or trying to figure out and look into like what that extra building was before I put this under contract guys. Like, I just want to be like super upfront and transparent since look, I'm trying to comp here. All I can do is comp, you know, as is or, um, after repair or rentals, if you're just giving me an address, I only got so much information to go off of and some guesses to make. So this isn't necessarily deal analysis. I feel like 20 is probably going to be higher than I ever want to pay for that thing, but we'll see. Uh, we'll kind of dig into that some more. Um, 52. Oh, eight. Let's go, Zane. All right. Now, Zane, I'm just going to let y'all know. He is a titan. 
So I know Zane is not going to be giving me a shack to cook in the middle of a cornfield. All right, so sometimes you'll see this happen. I have to think, oh, uh, there's for some reason some land split off. Hyung. All right. Um, so something I want to tell you all a little bit about the different markets that we look in. This is probably a better price point for St. Louis. This number is an indicator of something to me, this rent number. Um, there are some markets where you need to buy deeper if your exit strategy strategy is as a running numbers as a rental versus a single family flip okay, is, is nothing hello <laughs> all right all right all right I've already got it on there, there, and let's pull it here. And this is going to be my last one, <laughs> you guys, because I'm going to be here every week. So we're also going to have, God willing, faster streaming next week with our fiber optics. And this will only keep getting better. Just so you guys know, these are the reasons that we haven't done this show before. Because people keep asking me, like, why have you, why are you just now doing this? And it's like, there's reasons, like, this moves a little bit slow when you're popping back and forth, right? Like I said, uh, we, are, we were totally intending to have fiber optics you know, already installed by right now, uh, or the fiber optic line, the internet or whatever. Um, Elijah's worked so hard on getting us like the good equipment and things like that. Um, so we've been trying to kind of up our game on media and presentation. So that it was helpful for you guys instead of sitting here for like so long waiting for something to upload. So we're, it's only going to get better. Um, all of that to say why, Okay, so here we go. 842. The first thing I'm going to do in here on a property that's that size. It doesn't come with a preset on no St. Louis. Oops. We'll see what we get. I just am not going to spend a whole lot of time clicking on properties. Uh that aren't necessarily applicable. So one of the things I am excited to comp this property, I need to make my own live doing this. This is mine. Are you saying because I'm on RJ's YouTube page? RJ's YouTube page is kind of like Titanium's YouTube page. This is mine, I promise. Oh, for Pete's sake. Are we serious, right meow? Moving over, <laughs> 5248. Come on, girl. This is what I'm saying, 5248. Hell is it? Helen Street. Okay. 
good gravy. Why is it doing that? I mean, she is on one today with y'all. I'm not even messing with this. Like, this is irritating me. And I never have this problem. In fact, this is usually the one I don't have any problems. Is this because this could be 63136? Ah, I see the problem. This is Jennings. Yeah. It's pulling up as Jennings rather than St. Louis. See, y'all, I'm just mostly probably problem solved for crying out loud. I'm over it. I don't know if it's because of the internet or because it's just being persnickety today. But again, I never, I, I really don't run into that problem. And again, there's a first time for everything. 720, 504. You're crazy. Okay, let's just say it needs to have like a minimum of 600 square feet. Since apparently, I don't even know where y'all keep finding these. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. So y'all will notice how I keep kind of tweaking the presets. Uh, going back to it, um, if you're, you know, didn't tune in at the beginning, I'm trying to look for what an appraisal is going to pick. So sometimes if I see really consistent stuff going on right up in my neighborhood, I definitely am not, again, I don't care if it's within a half a mile or a quarter of a mile or whatever. I'm not picking one over here on Bircher Street when I've got six to pick from right in my little neighborhood, right? So I don't know if y'all saw that. Um, here I am. I am on market with these two. One of the things I love looking at on market properties for is because it really tells you what an agent will think that it's worth. Um, and you can really go in here and determine. This is active under contract. It was listed only uh blah blah blah. it was listed at only 65.5 for 55 days again you guys i apologize for things not necessarily popping up in any quick amount of time because i think that has to just do with the fact that we're streaming but you guys understand i am you i know you understand what's going on yeah see how it has this like, let me see you. So, um, we can try to actually Hamilton Avenue. We can try to go like this. See, St. Louis, Missouri. So another thing that I think is really cool about Propelio is that you can just like pick on that. You can thumbs up it right there. And it'll save it as a comp and it'll kind of do your averages and things like that for you. Uh, all of them do that in a little bit different way. But um, right now, I know that Batch is actually implementing a similar uh, thing where it's just uh, easy to do that from the map. But right now, you just do it uh, similar to PropStream where you do it right here. Um, so what? Go in 0.25. Cause I'm not trying to be across the freeway. I already know. Interesting. All right. So my set criteria, cause this is 674 versus 600. There's a lot of properties in there in the other range. Isn't that interesting? Okay. I am mad. So this property is 720 square feet, built in 1928. It looks like it's a really cute little remodel. Um, 
curious if that edition is part of the livable square footage recorded as well as one of the things I always want to look at in these is seeing if they have basements, you know? So sometimes what I really like to do, um, is if that's the comp that I'm clicking on, I click on those details and it pulls up in a separate tab here. Um, so I can kind of see, I go under our property details. I'm looking at that detached garage. I'm looking at that has a full basement just to make sure, um, total rooms for this is a two one has a like has more square footage uh sim similar lot size um you know things like that i'm gonna look at the facade very quickly hopefully and here we go so this is not brick Image capture August 2021. This is in pretty rough shape. I'm thinking we're not going to have a garage. I'm thinking that this is a very much off. I do not see substantial evidence unless there's something more. When you look at this street view, I don't feel like there's an additional building not being accounted for. And I would verify that square footage, that sort of thing, because, I mean, you can even almost see, uh, yeah, that would make me very nervous to lock up at any rate. Um, hmm. This is also one of my situations, you guys, when we're in a market where they said it was ugly. Yeah, this is extra ugly. Um, I mean, I'm going to assume that this is at least a $35,000 rehab, uh, even though it's a really small house. Maybe at least thirty. dollars um, We look like we have structural issues in the roof. Um the roof is really obviously needing to be replaced. I'm thinking an inside and outside. Now, you might not have to put everything plus the kitchen sink at it to make it a good rental. But in this price point in St. Louis, you're going to want to be at a 25 to 3% rental. And you want to make sure to really look at your as-is comps. One of the things is in, in a lot of these markets, um, a lot of places in like Louisiana, Kansas City, Detroit... Uh, you know, RJ talked about this earlier, and I know a lot of you were uh, watching his live. Uh, you're going to start to see um, these markets where it's not going to make sense to do a flip. You know, you, you don't want to purchase this for any dollar amount and put $30,000 into it when the highest price comp that you're pulling up is $33,000. It just doesn't make any sense. So what you'll want to do is look at that rent rate because that's what buyers and investors are going to be buying this at. And you're going to want to see what a lot of your as is comps look like. So you really want to start looking at this. Hey, you know, this is a $9,000 property. What does a $9,000 property look like? So you're comping your, your as is comps, not necessarily your flip comps. Um, you're hoping that you can um, get into this property for maybe $5,000 and throw 10 grand at it and rent or, you know, get 10 to 20 grand at it so that you're like kind of all in with your closing costs, um, your holding costs at, you know, not, not a level where it doesn't even make sense to have a rental. Um, these areas where you're, you're you're getting into a really distressed property a lot of times that's why you know you'll have to look at what kind of tax credits you can get as an investor to to purchase a long-term vacant property or in a neighborhood that you know has a lot of distressed properties um you know and i'm just going off of assumptions here um you know i mean i would assume this 
you know, I'm just kind of going through the comps again. Let me see cages on ACs outside, potential asbestos sighting. And yeah, um, the the comp that sold for 96, I mean, probably could get some paint and carpet in it and a new roof. It's got a, a bad roof leak. There's a new flooring in the kitchen. I'll pop, sorry, I'll pop heck over. It has carp. Maybe that's lint. Look, look. <laughs> Vinyl flooring. I can't. I think that's carpet in the bathroom. But you see what I'm saying? Like, these are, this is actually what a $9,600 property looks like. I mean, it's not cute, you guys. But somebody bought this for 9600 See what I'm saying? And I'm thinking the majors, I it looks like maybe this roof was redone. And they just got to redo the drywall in the ceiling, to be fair, in that kitchen. Because they had patched and patched and patched. See what I'm saying? Or maybe they only did half the roof. But that's a $9,600 property. Somebody probably went and put 10 to 15 grand in that. So they probably spent, let's just do high, high numbers. 15 plus 9,600 plus maybe a thousand for other expenses because it's so cheap. Uh, I mean, look, if they're in it for more than 30, I'd be very surprised. It has a rent rate for 73, 738. So you definitely can do just over 2% rental here, but you've, you've really, I mean, you got to consider like your house probably in worse condition than this house. So are they going to give it to you for a thousand dollars? So on and so forth. Okay. All right, my loves. Oh, Kip, you're such an angel. Thanks, Baba. Hey, I'm gonna be here every Wednesday. Uh, so get your comps ready. Like I said, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry if I missed any of your guys's. Um, if you stay on with me, <coughs> sponsored by bank, not really, not, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I live my life on Folgers and Bang Energy. Um, but if you are, um, if you put, a, if you put a property in there and I didn't get to it, please feel free to message. If you're a Titan, hit the hotline. Um, if you are, uh, not, you can, uh, message me on Facebook. I'll be happy to take a, a further look in or get more information to help you analyze or whatever. That's what we do this for. That's what we're here for. You have your comps ready for me next Wednesday, same time, 3 PM central standard time. Um, shouldn't take as long, but you know, we'll cover some more and more in depth stuff. Um, <laughs> I wish I was sponsored by Bang Energy. Um, I appreciate y'all. You just bought me some Starbucks and some Folgers and some Dunkin' Donuts, uh, coffee, and some Bang Energy drinks uh, so that I can keep uh, getting on here every week and just providing value for you guys. Um, and I'll, I'll definitely go into... I know, Mr. Stevens, he's so fancy. Okay, you guys, RJ's on my computer commenting as me, if you didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate all of you for tuning in. Um, and like I said, we can do this forever and ever. Amen. You guys brought some real good uh, challenging ones today. Um, and we'll be able to get through more as soon as we have a little bit less lag time going back and forth between all three tools that we use and all of the screens that I use to pull up comps because I actually really do that in a very quick way. So um, please keep your questions uh, coming and keep your comps coming. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys all next week again, Wednesday, Central Standard. 3 p.m. For now, have a lovely week and I'll see you next time.